Hello, everyone. Welcome to the next segment. I'm going to be calling this segment Fillers. Um, it's kind of a not a proper name, I guess. Um, it's more of a thing, really. What what I'm going to be talking about here is is um, it's more than just filling up the open green space with farmland. It's more than that. Um, you'll notice right away that I have the contour lines turned on. Um, the contour lines are turned on for this, and I think it'll it'll make it yeah it'll make it quite a bit easier to see and maybe follow along with what I'm saying. Um, so first of all, let's let's talk about the obvious part of this. So you know this kind of goes for real life too. Outside of your your city core, there isn't going to be just you know bare naked land that's wasted it's more than likely always going to um, have some kind of agriculture or ranch lands or parkland or, or something like that. It's going to have that. Um, I think kind of a little disservice that a lot of people do to themselves is they, you know, they just leave this open area blank and then you just kind of have your, your, your development just kind of floating in the middle of nowhere. Um, again, you know, that's fine. I just, I'm all about going the extra little mile. Um, so yeah, so if you got some nice flat land, you know, fill it up. I live in North America, so most of my stuff is going to be squares. And if you live somewhere else and if they're not squares, don't do squares. Do, you know, like in Europe, they're going to be a lot of, a lot of wild stuff on how land is partitioned up and such. Um, but that's the first thing. The first thing is, you know, obviously, if you can if you can fill it up, um, great. Um, secondly, when I when I build these farmlands, what I like to do is I like to have it bleed into the main 25. So, you know, like I don't want it to just abruptly end outside of the buildable area. I want it to kind of bleed in, so it kind of has a transition. I think that's simple enough. I don't need to explain any more about that. But you can kind of see like how, you know, your your dense and your port and your suburbs would just kind of taper off, and then maybe there would be like another suburb or a like a satellite town all on its own. You can even see I even left this main gravel road just to kind of tie in, just to kind of tie in if you wanted to. Um, when I'm building these, you know, obviously I'm using the the resource colors, if you will. But don't forget, I think everybody forgets this. Don't forget that you have the, uh, the uh, what is it called? The ruin texture at your disposal too. So like, see how these tree these tree rows have like a cultivated line underneath? You probably guessed it. It's, what I'm doing is I'm making the ground bleed. I am forcing, you know, objects underneath them and um let's see there you have it it's gone and this you know like this i've checked and i've checked and there is no negative impact to this in the game these pillars don't have a count and there's they're subterranean so to my knowledge they're, they're not even being rendered this color you it's all pillars all developed pillars again all developed pillars pillars and guess what the beauty of this is is if someone wasn't using the common ground mod or 81 tiles, the tiles not unlocked, it'll still look like a nice green square. It won't look out of place or, or like the player's missing anything. It's just, you know, <laughs> just don't forget that, that, you know, this is at your disposal where you can just bring out another texture. Another one too, that I don't think a lot of people realize is your walking path is also a texture. So like this whole pond, like the like this, I I consider this theme like the mountain theme, like the mount, like the Pacific Northwest theme. It's it's from a canyon. My very first friend um, here in this in this um, game. Um, but yeah, it's you know like. There's only such a few such a few colors and textures that you can use, but you know if you think outside the box, 
know, it's fine just to use this. If you want to use walking paths for like an undercolor, no, uh, undercolor um, ground texture, it's fine. It's the problem is, is when you get a node under the water, it'll tell you that it's drowning. See, only when the node is, but the main segment, you can have that stuff underwater all the time. It'll never make an error. So as long as your nodes are outside of the water, you're good to go. So, um, yeah, just a couple little good tricks for you right away. Um, actually, you know what? Speaking of tricks, if you guys want to make a really nice pillar, grab this um, metro line pillar, click it. Don't move your mouse. Right click it, click it, right click it, click it, right click it. Look at that. It's like a perfect, it's just perfect. It's, so, yeah, I really like making that one. Um, yeah, so just a couple things like, Make sure, use all the textures that you have, like use them all. If I wasn't so afraid to blow uh, blow my node counts out of the water, I'd probably have this color of the walking paths mixed in here too. But um, it's, you know, I don't, but that's that. So yeah, so farmland, have them bleed out. I'm gonna be talking more about the, the shelter belts and the tree lines. Um, when I switch maps, I'm going to switch to the project map. I just, I thought I would start here because, well, A, it's done. And B, the first time I kind of started talking about this, I just so happened to be on this map. And I, and I said something about, um, fillers and I'll just stick with it because why not? So, um, that's a filler. These farmlands. This is a this is a filler. Again, we have it here. Like, what a perfect way to fill up this little stream. And again, like you can see, I've bled the farmland into where somebody would build. So you know, it would just it would just blend where you could have kind of like, you know, here you could put um, homes with like bigger size yards, kind of more out of town. Um, yeah, and I think that would look quite good. So simple enough, but when I do that, just for you know, so you know, when I do this, I make sure that all the textures um, that can be built on inside these 25, they all do have the fertile underneath. Because if you didn't know, fertile can be mixed with oil, fertile can be mixed with ore, but ore and oil can't be mixed together. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I said that right. So. You know, just for an example, pull out your, where is where is it? Pull, pull out your, oh, I'm in a new game, that's why. If I was in map editor, oh no, I'm in map editor. Where is my, did I start a new game? No, I didn't. I don't know where my resources are. But anyway, yeah, you can, you can just take your fertile and run it right under the the oil and it'll hardly change its its color so so yeah so if someone wants to use farmland all this is good to go um now the real reason what i mean by fillers is i was talking about it earlier and this this is probably going to be a big topic of objection but <sighs> I'm sure there's people that would love to see a giant, a giant blank canvas and they could just build grid after grid after grid after grid after grid and, and, and that's what they want. And that's great. That's just their style. But you know, like honestly, like the reason I think this one particular map did so well, wasn't because of like the mountains and the, the waterworks and all that. I think it was just because it was a very manageable building area. It's it's just it's like I've redone this map. It's it's been altered, but it's still pretty much the same in size and design. Um, but it is my personal belief that I think players are turned away from a endless green sea of land to build on. I might be wrong, you know. I could have it backwards, but just me personally. It's, it's kind of like that strategy when you're paying off your student loans. You want to pay off the smallest one first, and then you want to take down the next smallest one and the next smallest one. You want to take it out in chunks. And I really, 
I've been building these maps with with kind of that belief that well it's more than that because you know if if I'm going to make these maps and I'm just going to throw it together and let the player figure it out I'm I'm probably doing myself and them a, a great disservice so I guess what I'm getting at is I want to be I want to be very aware of what I'm giving the player. There should be a direct relationship between my terrain and the decisions that the player has to make. You know, other than how many houses can I fit in this giant square? Okay, so let me let me start talking about this. So, um So when I have it on the contour lines, you can easily see the buildable spaces. Here's one. Here's one. And this long, thin one is another one. This lake, this pond, is not here by chance. I forced this pond to be here. And the reason why is because before this pond was here, I had a very large building area. I thought it was too big. So remember in episodes past, I was talking about the highways servicing areas where cars would get on and off and back to the highway. Okay, so you can easily see that before this pond was here, I had a very large, very large area, and I cut it in half with this pond. If this pond wasn't here, it wouldn't make a difference. Nobody would say, oh, there needs to be a lake there, and vice versa. Nobody's going to say there needs to be a lake here, and there's not a lake here, or whatever. It's just I'm choosing to put a lake here, and nobody's thinking twice. And then again, this was just, I, I have like this gate imaginary thing and and yeah like the water can run out here again this is this to me is a filler and this hill this is a filler i am putting things on the map that are not meant to be built on and you know what the beauty of it is if the player isn't okay with that they're going to delete all these trees and they're going to flatten out the land and life goes on because they can do that but just for me like i said i'm trying to lead the player along so what i've done is i've cut this land in half and made two smaller, more manageable building spaces. And if you want to look even further, this rock cluster, these trees, again, are dividing the land into smaller pockets. This is going to be one neighborhood for the player. It's going to be called Hidden Valley. Here's another community. It's going to be called Harvest Hills, like whatever. It's just... I think what I'm doing is I'm making a more manageable experience for the player. Okay. So like this hill, you know, I just chose to put it there again because I'm dividing the land. Okay. Um, next example. Let's go over here. So I think it's more, this is kind of like I'm caught. This is more obvious. So again, look at my highway. There's a train line here. So I have, I have this big square. For somebody to build on you know this is this is quite a distance this is from here to here this is going to be over 300 units so again it, there's no hills there's no sloughs there's no fancy anything i just decided to strategically put these rock clusters here 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 and i blended them in with trees and look what that's doing i'm making a smaller pocket here a smaller pocket here in a smaller pocket here. It's, I mean, it's, I could have put these trees anywhere. I just, I just chose to put them in an area which would divide the land up. Because remember, like when, when the player is coming in here with the rows, I want, I want there to be a relationship. Like, oh, there's rot, like, you know, maybe I'm going to just, you know, maybe I'm just going to skeet these rows around and, and shape it. That's all I want because I, ju I just want I want a relationship between the land and the player. OK, um, next again, like you can I'm almost getting predictable now. So rocks coming off. I've just again, I've just divided this area in the half. See what I mean? See when this is naked, look at uh, look at how it looks. It's it's too much. Yeah, I can build it here. Then I'll figure out this part later. It's different. Um, again, 
cutting into two small, like it's, this one's easy, two smaller parts. Again, the tree work, it just makes it two smaller parts. Two smaller parts. Um, this one's a little bit different. So uh, this road, so I needed to gain elevation for this road to get up to the dam. So I had to get high. And, you know, like what I was tempted to do and what most players I think would do was they would just take their flat brush and level all this out. Uh, and they would, you know, they would level all this out too. So they'd have a one nice even building plane. But what I chose to do was I chose to bring the hill out. Because, I, again, A, I got that nice embankment from the outside turn of my river. But then I was also able to keep this line across. So now, again, you guessed it. I had this very large buildable area, and I it was very I – just, I just cut it in half. And all I cut in half was a, it was a change in elevation. That's it. So, I mean, it's not – this is like, it's so optional. It's not even like, this is just what I think really helps. Cause when you zoom out, you know, you can just kind of, it doesn't look like anything, but to me, but to me, I can, I can easily see that I can just like see partition after partition, partition, partition. And I think it just makes for a, for an easier time building, I guess. Okay, um, welcome back to the map we're working on. And um, yeah, it probably probably looks different again. I've been I've been continuing to work on it uh, here and there. And um, and yeah, so I have most of the trees laid. Oh yeah, so last time we were here, we were doing those mountains. We're just gonna kind of keep them. We're just gonna kind of keep them the way we have them. Um, they look fine with the trees and you know we just we just changed these last few ones and smoothed out some hills and and yeah i'm i'm pretty sure like all our terrain and elevation is is um is good it's a little bright a little bright here yeah so so fillers so um, so let me start with this. So I just pulled up the city I live in and I was saying earlier how, you know, like you're going to have, you're going to have your metropolitan area and outside, you know, there's, there's going to be land that's owned by people and the land is more than likely going to be farmland. So let's just, um, here, so let's just, so again, where I live, you know, all these sections and and they're always squares. They're not just squares. They're exact squares. They're given out and they're sold a long time ago as exact squares. And then if you zoom out even for or zoom in, excuse me, even further, you can see that this field, you know, was either you know this agricultural land was either rezoned into a country residential lot where someone was able to build their house, or simply the farm owner just happens to live there. Um, so you see that a lot. Um, you know, like the closer you get into cities, the more the more subdivisions you'll see. And the farther out you get, um, it, the trend continues where there's, there's less of that. So you can see a lot of squares. They're literally all squares. Um, and then you get the occasional diagonal line because there's a road there or there's, you know, uh, a canal and we lose our, we lose our, we lose our 90 degree directions. Um, yeah, see here is a perfect example of what I, so here's a nice rectangle and there's two homes that were cut out of it. A nice one there and a nice one there. So basically to recap, a lot of squares, they're all unison in size. Now, here we are. So, um, I haven't really done a style like this before, but I'm pretty much just just um, keeping the trend. So um, math can be your friend in this game. So 
if everyone if, if people didn't know it one tile is 240 units so just to prove it go across about there and you can't even read it but see at 240 right right in the middle there so if you wanted to follow you know like a, a subdivision plan you could you could do what i'm doing and you know like 120 by 120 would be a very good choice to make a bunch of um, fields because that would that would just keep the scale where four of those boxes um, would make um, would make one uh, one tile one tile in the game let me get rid of that gone okay so let's go back to this so first thing you're gonna notice is I don't know if you remember but I drew this line, this road, a long time ago at a 45 degree angle, and I drew this road here at the zero degree or the 90 degree angle. Um, and I chose to work off the 45 degree angle for for my, um, you know, just for the agricultural plan. And the reason I chose that is just because it's the exact opposite of my main roads, because. Um, I guess maybe I'll show you now. Yeah, so when you build on cardinal directions like 90 degrees or zero degrees, the game can handle it a lot better than anything else. So again, let's say that you're just trying to clean up a hill. If your road's going perfectly east and west or north and south, you get a nice terrain line. Now you take that same road or whatever, if you're building like a feature area or something, you put it at a diagonal, you're gonna have all these jaggies that you're never gonna get rid of. I think like most people knew that. I just, you know, it's just so much easier to work with something like this. You know, if you were gonna hide it with pillars or, or just whatever, like it doesn't matter. It's just like, you're gonna be better off just building things at a, at a cardinal direction. Um, and that's what I usually try to do. And I guess not really a reason, just so I have less headaches. So you can see like this is completely east and west. This is completely north and south. This is completely east and west. This is completely north and south, completely east and west. I, I keep on revisiting the same um, angles. Okay. But anyway, back to what I'm talking about. So this gravel road. So what I chose to do, I, I can't remember why. It's actually been so long ago. But these squares are not 120. They're actually 144. So that one's 144, trust me if you can't see, it says 144. So this should be 144, and it is. And this should be 144, and it is. And this should be 144, and it is, and again. So basically when you zoom out, like without looking at it, without focusing on it, you should have a very eye appealing trend that looks like it belongs, okay? And then after that, it's totally up to you how you want to divide the land. So you can see, like, again, I have this farmland bleeding into the buildable area. I think that's very important because if someone wanted to have a little train station here and some farms, I mean, it's just going to match so perfectly. Um, again, this cutout, this cutout, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to emulate some farmhouses. I know there's nothing I can really do just because I, I build these assetless. Um, but there's like an abandoned building I can put in there. I forgot, I started doing these orchards because I wanted to get some color in the background because if you remember me saying like, I love this theme, but for like farmland, the textures are all kind of blending in with just your regular grass colors. This is oil, this is fertile, and then the ore is quite significantly different. So I'm forcing a lot of um, orchards with these colored trees. And I forgot that there's this new tree that's purple. I completely forgot. And so I was using these old trees. I'm going to replace them all. <laughs> but I just, I thought that was so funny that, because I used this tree a lot in my last map. And and there, like, this purple is, is a lot brighter. So we'll be switching all those out. But anyway, you know, it's completely, like, if you want to do something like this, it'll be completely up to you how you want to, um, subdivide the land and and you know like multiple fields on the same plot um but basically what i'm saying is draw the pattern of the roads like the county roads and then and then get rid of what you don't need okay so 
let's just um, let's just start doing an example. Um, okay, so let's just pretend like I'm not going to need this road here. So there's a field to the north. I'm not going to need this road here. So what I'd like to do, um, live oak is probably the best tree in the game, I think. Use your prop line tool. You're going to have errors. Go ahead and get rid of the errors. And and I, I really zoom in I right on the shadow in the middle, the non-tire tracks, so to right on the, there, and boom. That's my line. And then I'll just get rid of the road. It's easier to move it. And now I still have that effect where everything is partitioned equally because the tree line is where the road was. Um, also where I'm from, it's always more than one tree. Like we don't really have, um, well, I'm sure there's people that do it, but if you double up the trees, it just, it just kind of gives it a more girthy effect. So I've like I've chosen uh, two trees here, and it just seems to I don't know just it looks it looks fuller, um, but that's that's just how they look around where where I live. Um, so again, what I like to do is I like to just draw the shapes of the fields as I think they'll be divided up, and again you just saw me. I will just draw the tree lines right over the roads so I know they're exactly square and I'll delete the roads from underneath them because the only roads that you will probably be keeping if you decide to do this is the main county roads. So that'll be this one that I'm highlighting and then this one that would be turning into this little area. Okay. Um, next thing, I think this is such a little gem that I do and I hope that other people do it but it just like I, I i do check you know other people's maps a lot and i haven't seen anyone do it but i just type in light and i find this one light it's like a it's like a warm vanilla one is it this one? Oh my gosh no it's too warm is it this one i think it's this one it doesn't matter it doesn't matter the color but anyway just check this out so we're back in the main city and if you dot look at this so if you just dot the countryside with yard lights like here's the house somebody lives here they got a yard light or that's just their house lighting up there's another one there's another one there's another one it just i just like i just said it earlier in that earlier segment that you know like people build people build their cities and it looks like they're just floating in this void. But look what I've done. I've just simply put life out there. Isn't that cool? Just just five lights. I'll probably add, you know, one or two more. But like look at that. It's just you can just believe that there's just a couple there's a couple of farmhouses out there. Um so yeah. Yeah, at night I, whenever whatever there's a place where boats go in, I just try to do the green on the right, red on the left. Um cuz that's just kind of what happens but just a nice little touch yeah but uh no i like to uh i like to just put those little farm lights out there and uh i'm the i'm the kind of i'm the type of player that always has it on daylight anyway but if you do let it cycle the night um i think that looks pretty cool um so this little section oh yeah one more thing so i'm really i'm really serious about like the grid so this line sure enough lines right up with that because that's actually how it would be is you know like the land is measured by like west of meridian whatever quadrant this one corner section this one so it would actually like it would actually follow a parallel or a latitude um so yeah like i just just these little touches to make sure that like you're not going to focus on it but in your peripheral vision like it would just kind of look like it belongs there. Um, so let's do this section.
Okay. Um, yeah, so sorry that I made you watch that. I might just fast forward that or something. Um, so yeah, now let's do the real fillers. Um, so what I'm looking for, you know, again, this is kind of at a pivotal point for this. Um, what I'm looking for is large, large, large areas of building space. So we're going to turn on our contours. This first island, I think, is pretty good. It's, uh, you know, like, it's not insane. I think that's very easy for someone to tackle, and it kind of skirts over here and... You know, it's kind of a little fun shape, but it's not huge. Um, this first, I already did this off camera. Um, I raised the 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 plane here just to kind of, you know, like just to kind of break up the um, unison of it. Um, and I just brought, you can kind of see it. I just brought the hillside along diagonally. And I, it literally just cuts this area in two because you know they're gonna you're gonna have a two directional on ramp off ramp here and you know like this this will be one part this will be another part um, so that one's easy um, here's another filler I've already done this one so uh, this is oh yeah I remember last episode I said I was gonna put a, like a little stream here it you can't see it but from up here you can see it it's like perfect. I just filled it up with trees. I deleted a line and I and I colored it. I made sure to drop the elevation just a tad. So like that came out really nice where you can just, yeah, it's not really a river, but it is. And it just fills up the lake. And I've just like, I've, you know, like this area is supposed to be like a ancient civilization kind of thing. So they uh, like they dammed it up so they could have a lake here a long time ago. And yeah, just when it overflows, like there's another, so this is a filler to me. So again, like what I've done is I've just cut a large piece of area into two. This thing here, it's not needed. It's completely unnecessary. It's just something that I'm doing. Okay. Um, this train track, this train track makes two buildable areas. So I think I'm good here. The highway again makes a smaller one. So again, there's a buildable size. Um, little pocket here. I don't need to do anything. Um, uh, we kind of got, see, like we kind of got like a bigger one here. So I'm like, when the time comes, I'm just more than likely gonna fill this up all the way. And, you know, like if the player wants to delete it, like, great, you know, that's just, that's fine. Um, so moving on, it's kind of a big one. I think, well, we'll see. This is a small, like this size is perfect where someone can just like get in there and build it. You got to remember that like when you're making the map, you're, you're always like, you're always like at this distance, but the person building is like, is like at this distance. So like, uh, see, see how far this is, it's actually a huge amount of space. Still going, still going. It's a lot. So I'm going to break this up. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is like, I'm just. You know, those trees might be there. They might not. I'm just kind of in my mind. Gee, you know what would be like really good? Is if I made like a depression. Let's get rid of that. So, what do we got here? 216, and what's the beach? 201. What's the middle of that? 208.
play with it, but that's an idea. No, I don't think it's going to stay. Okay, that's better. I just I found a new place for this. And um Yeah, I mean I I think I think we can work with that. Just, you know, it's just a dried up pond or who knows what. And again, like if this is in the way for somebody, very easy for them to get rid of it. It's just again, like see what I've done in the, is I've just I've just created a more focal area for someone to build on cuz don't forget like this is there's going to be a road coming on and off here, which will also kind of help divide this land. Um, but I forgot, like, the player is more likely going to build their... I don't think they're going to build their downtown here. I think that's going to be a port. So they'll either build it here or they'll build it here. Yeah, I think it's either going to be here or here. So... I guess, I guess maybe I can just let this area go. Maybe I'll find, because I still have to clean up this river a little bit. Maybe I'll find, because this will be the main beach. Yeah, I, maybe I can just let this one large area go and just maybe do some funky things with the trees. But I did kind of want to get a, a change in here where it would just kind of break it apart. And it's, I think it's okay. Um, so moving on. Um, again, buildable area, buildable area. This one's a little bit longer. Uh, we'll see. Again, this this is just the perfect filler. It's, you know, players not going to build on it. They're just going to build here and draw a road over to here, and they're going to and they're going to finish building here. Um, so like, I think that like, this is just absolutely perfect to me. Um, something like that. And again, like this is a big area, so I will be cutting this in half. Um, probably not with a hill because I have, I'll just have to do it with trees and rocks or, I'll, you know, I'll find something, but I'll cut that in half. Um, this hill here, this whole hill that you're looking at is a filler. I don't know if you remember, but a few episodes ago, I was talking about how I was worried that this one highway connection would feed all this area down here and all this area up here. And I just, I felt like I had no choice. I had to make this a hill. And again, you know, if someone wants to flatten it and build on it, they can. But for now, I'm just making it a hill. Okay. Uh, moving on. So... Um, this one's quite easy to me. So I have 216 throughout the map. And down here, I do have a lower change in elevation to 208, which I'm going to allow. So what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to, just like uh, the last map, I'm just going to pull this over. Oops. I'm just going to pull this over here. And you know, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna work this in. I'm not gonna just make it a flat line. And I'm gonna simply just hide it with, hide a hill with a tree row. And I think, I think it should be fine. Because I'm, I'm kind of intending this to be like a, a marina, residential, fun area. I'll, I'll dress that up better, but again, like this, this is going to be, it's not a big area because the hill does, well, it is going to come in. It's going to tighten up a lot. So it'll just be like a little kind of, just a couple rows down here. Um, this is a big area. This is a little bit more tricky. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm not going to compromise my, my train line. So... If it went there, so see, so I think all I'm going to do is I'm going to have a, 
It's going to have a little something kind of like this. Uh, oh, wait, the intersection. The intersection will be in the middle. Okay, so that won't work. So what we'll do is we'll just do two smaller ones there and there. And you can clearly see the reason why I'm just, I mean, they don't mean anything. It's just that they're so small that you can't argue that they belong there or don't belong there. And again, I'll... I'll work them in and blend them in. Just breaking up this giant giant mass. Okay, so the the two hills weren't working, so we just we're just gonna keep the one. Um yeah. That's all I got for that I guess. We'll I mean if I think it needs more work later on I'll I'll do that. Um I came back here, I kinda was actually able to break this up i think i think this is gonna stick uh, like you know we're gonna we're gonna fine tune this river because uh, this is really the only thing that hasn't really been done that's major but i haven't i haven't really done this um but yeah this just a simple idea of having these kind of like low areas that gather water but right now there's no water and I was very careful to choose a spot. So this is where the, the turn is. And we put this here because, you know, like the straightaways is where I think people want to build their roads off of. And it just so happens that this one is the one that I'm going to do for the start square. The start square is right here. Um, but yeah, I'll be building this interchange. But yeah, I just... I had to turn off the recording because I couldn't think, um, but, you know, I think this is going to work. I don't want to do it too many times, I guess, but yeah, I just, you know, not like this whole big area I've cut into one, two, three, quite effortlessly. And, you know, that's, that's my definition of a filler. It's just just breaking it up into smaller pieces. And, and again, you know, if people want, you know, if people want this giant, giant core area, you know, they can delete the trees, flatten it out and remove the sand. Um, so no big deal. Um, so we're back to here. And this is another big area. I don't really know what I'm going to do with this yet. I thought about just like bringing like a sliver of this river out. I don't know yet. I'll have to think on that one. Um, I've talked about this and then continuing on. So, you know, over the bridge in the tunnel and this one, this is one of the first things I did. This is kind of like where I started making the map was right here. And I've already done this. Like I've added a hill here. Um, there's a hill here. So literally these roads just kind of feed into their own respective um, building areas. There's nothing to do here. And then this um, this last one, just a small, small area. Um, nothing too much to think about. Um, this is interesting why I did this. Um, this was all the land and I just divided it up here. And the, only, the simple reason I did that was because the building area ends right here. So I just cut it off. I added a little water getting through there because it, would, it wouldn't be much fun to be building over here and there's this nice area and you just can't reach it, right? So I just I just cut it off. That's the only reason why that's like that. And I, I did some, you know, sand work and and it just it just kind of stuck. Um, so that's why, why that is. And we're back to the start. Um, 
I've been recording for a long time. I'm going to have to cut this up. It's way too long for just a simple idea of uh, of breaking the land up. Um, but yeah, like this, like this map has has gotten far in probably the just over a month I've been recording it. So pretty cool. Um, so second draft is done, and now now starts the hard part of the fine tune. Where, where literally I'll, I'll just, you know, I'll check every tree along the coastline. You know, like this coast isn't even drawn yet. Um, but like everything, everything's going to be fine-tuned. And uh, hopefully we have a finished product.